15 percent supported sending in more troops. By taking the policy you have, haven't you, Mr. Vice President, ignored the express will of the American people in the November election? Well, Chris, <clears throat> uh, this president, and I don't think any president worth his salt, can afford to make decisions of this magnitude according to the polls. The polls change. Well, this day was an election, day. sir. Polls change day by day, week by week. Uh, I think the vast majority of Americans want the right outcome in Iraq. The uh, challenge for us is to be able to provide that. But you cannot simply stick your finger up in the wind and say, gee, public opinion's against, we better quit. That is um, part and parcel of the underlying fundamental strategy that our adversaries believe uh, afflicts the United States. They are convinced that the current debate in the Congress, that the election campaign last fall, all of that is evidence that they're right when they say the United States doesn't have the stomach for the fight in this long war against terror. They believe it. They look at past uh, evidence of it uh, in Lebanon in 83, in Somalia in 93, Vietnam before that. They're convinced that the United States will, in fact, pack it in and go home if they just kill enough of us. They can't beat us in a stand-up fight, but they think they can break our will. And if we have a president who looks at the polls and sees the polls going south and concludes, oh my goodness, we have to quit, all it'll do is validate uh, the al-Qaeda view of the world. It's, it's exactly the wrong thing to do. This president does not make policy based on public opinion polls. He should not. Uh, it's absolutely essential here that we get it right. Mr. Vice President, we have to take a quick break here, but when we come back, we'll talk about Iran and the Democrats